Great. Without fur further ado, I want to introduce Ben Nuttall. Um, come on up. He has, uh, I think, traveled the longest of anyone in this room to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much for making. And I'm not just talking about the flight over the Atlantic. I'm talking about the drive from DC. <laughs> Possibly uh, the longest uh, longest commute. Um, so do we need to just plug you in here, David. You have to uh, guide me if I'm going to do something wrong here. I think it should just be Make sure to click your um, click your microphone. So Ben works with the Raspberry Pi Foundation. I'll just do a little brief intro here. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> the Raspberry Pi Foundation uh, is the, the group, the nonprofit group that builds these little computers. Um, they, the founder has a background in uh, with Broadcom, the cell phone chip manufacturer. So these are really inexpensive computers uh, using these kind of ubiquitous cell phone chips, um, and they're designed to give kids this kind of hands-on approach uh, to programming that. Um, really has kind of gotten lost in the age of, of the iPhone and the iPad, and uh, a computer's kind of being closed in. Um, so Ben's a recent hire. Uh, been with there a couple months, if that's uh, right. He's working with the education group specifically. Um, the Pi has found a huge following uh, in terms of enthusiasts, engineers, all kinds of fun projects, which is all excellent. Um, but the original mission is, of course, uh, in education. So this kind of road trip um, that they sent him on is to kind of see how the Pi is being used in the US, specifically in the education context. Um, so I think he's going to tell us a little bit, uh, give us an, an intro to that. Um, and during the q and I think it's going to be a two-way thing. We learn from him, uh, some of the cool things he's seen, and kind of show him uh, kind of what we're up to here in North Carolina. So uh, thank you, Ben. Yeah, that was basically my entire presentation. But, uh, you know, whatever. I'll, I can give it again. Okay, so um, hello, welcome. Um, forgive me if I'm a little dazed. I uh, just got here like 10 minutes ago uh, on my drive, drive from DC. It took me about six hours. Um, so, okay, so I, uh, as Elliot said, I'm from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. We're a UK charity based in Cambridge, just, we're just north of London in the UK. Um, so what is Raspberry Pi? Um, it's a single board computer. It gives you the chance to, it runs off an SD card, boot, um, boots, boots into Linux, and gives you the chance to get a full desktop computer experience that is, uh, has an embeddable and physical computing element. So I'm hopefully just gonna be able to show you this video if the, if the audio comes out. This is Raspberry Pi. Okay, that's not. Yeah, we have these handles. Yeah? Um, yeah. Should we try that? This is a Raspberry Pi. It's a credit card sized computer that costs around £25, designed to teach young people to program and is capable of doing all kinds of wonderful things. Back in the 80s, kids had to learn how to code computers to use them, but as a result, these kids grew up with an inbuilt understanding of how computers work. Now, we need more programmers than ever before. So to deal with this we problem, can kind of pantomime it. <laughs> we have a new Raspberry Pi to reignite the spark. <laughs> it runs Linux, a free operating system from an SD card, just like the one in your digital camera, and it's powered by a USB phone charger. You just plug in a mouse and a keyboard, connect it to a TV or monitor, and you're ready to go. In schools, not only is Raspberry Pi a great way to learn programming skills as part of ICT, there are also dozens of cross-curricular applications, like science, and music. And all over the world, people are experimenting with Raspberry Pis and attending Raspberry Jam events, where people of all ages are learning what can be done with a Raspberry Pi. Since the first Raspberry Pi was shipped, we've seen examples of people using the Pi in a variety of amazing and interesting projects. Taking advantage of its size, portability, cost, programmability, and connectability. So whether you want to learn to make games, build robots, or even teach a bird to parachute with Raspberry Pi, the sky's the limit! Okay, so if you heard any of that, then you'll know all about Raspberry Pi. Um, okay, so 
one of the um, the kind of as Elliot said actually um, with the with the technology we have today, iPads and things like that, it's just it's amazing that we've got this technology that you know does all these great great and amazing things. Um, but they kind of they kind of hide everything away from you. It's it's just a magic box that you you know you give it your commands with your hands and wave things about and everything happens. Um, and kind of with that with that technology, people don't really understand how computers work. They don't have any concept of you know um, logic as as programs work and things like that. So we wanted to kind of go back to the um, the era of BBC Basic, uh, BBC Micro, where you had a computer that you just plugged into a TV and and you you. It just gave you a programming interface, and you you had to program it to, to be able to use it at all. Nowadays, you know, every it's great that we that we you know we're not, we're not restricted in that way. But the fact that we're the programming is is hidden. You actually have to install things, especially you know on a normal computer, to be able to do any programming. We wanted to kind of go back to basics, and the uh, the prototype on the left here um, is is a very early edition of what was going to be a, what could have been a Raspberry Pi. It's like the size of a USB stick. The idea is it would be a, you'd put a USB on one side, so you'd put a keyboard in, and you'd connect the other end with HDMI to your TV or a monitor, and you would just have a Python programming interface like a like a BBC BBC Micro, but with a modern modern programming language, and that's all it was ever supposed to be. But we kind of, as as the idea developed and as uh, as things progressed, we kind of thought, well, we want to be able to open up a lot more than just some, you know, typing calculations and things into Python. We want to actually give them a desktop. We want to give them, and it was easy enough to, to, to take that extra step to put the whole operating system on there. So, the the one at the board in the middle, Evan is holding here, is a prototype of the, the, the next generation of the Raspberry Pi prototype, which is a bit a bigger board that have everything on it that it has now. Uh, and then the third one was was the original the, the credit card sized version that we that we have that we have now, the original Model B. Um, so when the Raspberry Pi came out, it was the beginning of 2012, and everybody put in all these orders that every, everybody wanted one, and they they just they only expected to sell about 10,000, and they took 100,000 orders on the first day, despite both websites selling them crashing. Um, <laughs> and then you know it took a few months to get all those orders out because they had to they were still making them in China originally, and uh, it was kind of a it was kind of a big deal to put in such, such, such big orders. Um, but once people started getting them, uh, this whole community just appeared out of nowhere. And it was a, an amalgamation of people who were hackers already, programmers, developers, anyone interested in software or hardware, and a whole, a whole mix of all those people, along with all these new people who were kids in schools, teachers, parents, anyone who wanted to be interested, who was interested in the ideas, or wanted to get involved. And we started seeing all these, like this, this, this one in the top left here was a, a case that somebody started making and selling as a Raspberry Pi accessory. And there was a whole market emerged out of this. People were selling cases, add-on boards, robotics kits, and all sorts of things. Magazines, books, and all, all, this, all this kind of thing uh, just appeared. And there's a whole market around Raspberry Pi, and we think that's amazing. Um, so one of, the, one of the great things about Raspberry Pi as opposed to a desktop computer because people say, you know, if it's just about learning to code, you can do that on any computer. You just have to install Python or something like that. Um, yes, that's true, but there's so many people out there are actually taking the, ch the chance with Raspberry Pi to, to, to begin their, their journey on, in programming and in learning about computer systems. <coughs> One of the most interesting things is the GPIO, the General Purpose Input and Output Devices. So these pins on here, um, they allow you to plug in real-world electronic components, and then program them. So if you want to plug in a light, an LED, or a buzzer, or sounds, you can have your program interface with, with those real-world things. Rather than just a visual thing on screen, something, in, something physical, you can make something physical happen. And this is just a simple um, diagram. You can, you can connect a few LEDs with resistors and a button, and have yourself a simple circuit. So it's kind of not just learning about <coughs> electronics and components, but interacting with these things in a different way. And the, the B+, plus, I don't know if you know, I've got a few, um, a few down here. This is the model B+, plus, the new Raspberry Pi. It's the same, it's the same um, essentially the same board as the original one, but it has extra USB ports, and it also has 40 GPIO pins, so it kind of opens up a, a lot more um, exposure to different devices there. 
Um, so I just want to kind of, I've just got a few slides where I'm going to showcase a few projects that we've, that we've seen that we really like. So this is one, Adafruit, the American um, hardware company. They put together a whole tutorial on how to build your own Game Boy. Now some of you here may, may, may even be too young to remember the Game Boy. Uh, I certainly uh, grew up playing Game Boy, but this is, this is a build your own Game Boy. That has a Raspberry Pi inside. It's just, just the right size, and it uses buttons from a NES um, device, and you can actually build the whole thing and load it with games, uh, which, which we thought was really cool. And not just them doing that, but sharing how to do it, and selling you all the parts, of course. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Um, there's a guy in, uh, in the UK called Dave Ackerman, who, whose hobby is sending balloons into the stratosphere with Raspberry Pis attached, with cameras, taking pictures of the Earth. And he gets these incredible shots of, of the atmosphere around the Earth. And he also, um, he also sent the, the Raspberry Pi mascot, Babbage, uh, into space. He, he recreated the Felix Baumgartner, whatever his name is, the, um, the, the world record sky, human skydive. He recreated that with Babbage, and he got a little bit further, a little bit higher up. <laughs> on, on a budget, compared to Red Bull sending um, the Stratus mission on 300 million or something daft like that, on a budget of 300 pounds. Uh, and not only that, not only, again, not only the fact that he's doing this, is that he's showing schools how they can send things into space. He's built, he's built a, a board that he can, you can, he's selling now, that means you can do everything, that, or get all the experience, he's done several uh, several dozen of these these uh, kind of flights, and all the experience that he's built up in doing that, he's he's put it into one place and said, you can you can do this now for a very you know bringing the space you know the NASA space budget uh, into the into the putting it in the hands of kids in in elementary schools, uh, which is really cool. And he's also doing commercial flights. <laughs> So he did a project called Wreck My Dress. So if you want to send your wedding dress into space and then collect it when, it's, when it comes back to Earth and then keep it saying, my wedding dress has been in space, Dave will do that for you. Which, and I just think this is an amazing picture. <laughs> yeah, Dave is, Dave is quite, quite special, quite cool. Um, there's, this is a real shame, there's a really good video accompanying this, but I'm not on the Wi-Fi as I just arrived, I'd like to show you. But um, Somebody has built a, so he's sick of, this guy was sick of cats entering his garden. So he decided to try and use the Pi to detect when a cat came into, into his garden and shoot it with a hose, with a water hose. <laughs> um, and there's a, there's, a brilliant, um, there's a brilliant feature of the Python library that deals with, that uh, interfaces with a camera. Uh, called circular buffer, where you can say, okay, something's just happened, give me the last 20 <coughs> seconds of video, and then he, he gets that and uploads it straight to YouTube. So whenever it detects the cat, <laughs> sprays the cat with water, and then sends the video to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and then the video I'd like to show you is, is, is it's, it's very good. Perhaps we'll be able to show it later today. But yeah, really, really cool. Uh, if you Google, uh, it was on the register, the website, the register. So if you Google uh, the register Raspberry Pi cat detector or something, you'll You'll find it. It's it's quite amusing. Um, so uh, th this is the Raspberry Pi website. I was hired um, to uh, to put this together, as well as doing all the all the outreach work and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, one of the one of the things about about the new website is that we have this resources section. So if you click on the um, the tab on the on the side there, uh, we have resources in three sections: teach, learn, and make. So teach is things like full schemes of work for teachers. Uh, and it's based on the UK curriculum. We're, we're just getting started here, so it's um, you know the, the the repository of resources will will certainly grow and will will diverge more into into the rest of the world. Um, learn is is kind of single exercise. If you if you know if you're a teenager or, or even a, an older teenager, um, you you could um, you know you could you could learn you learn part components about uh, computing and about about physical computing and and programming. Um, in those single exercises in, in the learn section. And then make is for things like putting together a robot and building your cat detector and your, all, those, all those bits and pieces and things like that. So we've got a few um, examples here. So 
This one here, we've got, uh, this, this is a Morse code tapper. You can just buy, buy like a, a standard Morse code, um, I don't know, there's another word, tapper. And, um, and there's a Python, um, th there's an exercise where you can go through and learn how to decode, you know, set up a decoder for, um, for turning the Morse code taps into, into characters and then into messages and displaying them on the screen. And you actually build that up over, over time throughout the exercise. It's not just a, here's the finished product, you know, have a play with it. You can't do that, of course, but if you want to actually learn, learn but, you know, this is a really interesting way of learning something like Python, is to actually get physical, get down to, get, get to grips with, um, with that. So you can see there, there's just two pins going from the, from the Morse code thing uh, into the GPIO pins. Uh, and that's all it takes, it's just, you just listen on those two pins uh, for, the, um, for the length of the, um, the connect, it just makes a connection. So we've got um, this one here on the next to that is, uh, is one of our cameras, the, the, the Noir camera, which is the a camera with the infrared, infrared filter removed. Um, we, we placed it there in a bird box. Uh, so you can build a bird box that has, or buy a bird box and put a pie and a camera in there. And you can set up an infrared sensor so that when a bird comes into the, um, uh, the bird box, you can film it and then stream the video on, um, online or, or into your house. Uh, the Lego ones here, so um, you can put together using again using the camera. You can make a stop frame stop frame animation movie by setting up uh, the pie and the camera with a button, so that when it when you press the button, it takes a picture. And um, and if you you know use something like Lego um, to create a scene, and then you can take a picture, move the scene slightly, take a picture, move the scene slightly, and develop you know the scene scene. Uh, yeah, capture this, the scene being developed and then render all that into a video and you've got yourself a stop motion animation uh, video, which is really cool. So we've got um, Python on there. There's a, lot, there's a lot of exercise for just learning Python and, and you can do it in these, all, all these different interactive ways. There's also a program called Sonic Pi, which is um, another kind of different, a different spin on learning programming. It uses um, a really simple programming interface. It's, it's using the language of Ruby. Uh, and it, it's a way of making music with code. So you write music, so play 37, response, uh, would play the note 37, the mini note 37. Play 49, play something else. And you learn programming concepts by, by writing the code and hearing the music and hearing what, you know, having the, the audible uh, representation of what that code represents. Really interesting way um, of, of learning through, um, in that way. We've got some networking resources and things like that, sort of physical Linux networking and that kind of thing. Uh, we've got the Crest eggheads, which is very similar to the Lego thing, where you capture frames of the crest growing out of an egg's head uh, and see it, see it grow into a video. Uh, and this, this one here is quite an interesting one. We had a poster competition back at the, um, the beginning of the year. We asked kids to send in project ideas of what they wanted to do with the Raspberry Pi. And Somebody sent in a poster, it was a, an eight-year-old girl, I think, saying, hamsters are nocturnal, which means that it's out playing when I'm, in, uh, when I'm asleep, and when I want to play, it's, it's asleep. So I want to have a user Raspberry Pi to capture what it does at night, because I want to know. She, she was saying she thought it, it would be having a, having a party or something. <laughs> so we call this ha hamster party cam. So whenever, it, whenever, it, whenever the... Um, Whenever it's triggered by the uh, the hamster moving uh, the hamster moving around the cage or the or the wheel spinning around, it takes pictures and starts up disco lights and flashes lights and things. <laughs> tries to encourage the, the camera the, the, the hamster to uh, to have a party. Um, so all these resources they they're, they're all kind of there's always sort of some um, some outcome in it in you know whether it's getting the video of your animation or the crest growing or getting your bird box or your there's all, all those kind of things. We give, they're just introductions to the types of things you can do. They're not uh, kind of, you do this and, and that's it. You know, we always say, what can you do? You know, if, you, if, you have, if I've shown you how to wire up a button that takes a picture, can you make a, maybe you can make a photo booth. Maybe you, maybe you can um, think of something else. <laughs> <laughs> Long drive. Uh, but there's plenty of ideas, and you will just by looking on our blog and looking on the internet, you'll see all the sorts of things people have done with Raspberry Pi, um, and the the kind of community that I was talking about. It's it's grown in such a way that everybody 
sort of feels inclined to share what they've done because they want to kind of show off that, want to tell people what they've done, and they want to share how they did it, uh, which is really cool because it means that you can pick up somebody's project, start doing it, and then get to a point where you say, actually, I want to do something else. I want to go in this direction. I want to add a camera to it. I want to add some lights. I want to do and use it for this purpose. And you can do something entirely different. But using somebody else's starting point is a really, really good way of doing it. So I hope that's uh, kind of inspired you to, as to you know, kind of give you an introduction to what types of things you can do with Raspberry Pi. Um, feel free to um, have a chat with me this evening or get in touch otherwise. Uh, I'll have some, have some cards with me and you can come and take a card and take a sticker. Um, I also have some Raspberry Pis I want to give out. I'm going to give three away. Um, I don't really have a system for how I decide who gets them. Maybe the youngest, who's the youngest person here? How's <laughs> <laughs> your random? How's your random? How's your pseudo random number generator? Yeah, I, this is a reverse auction. So, what are your ages? <laughs> twelve. Twelve. Can we? Anyone younger than twelve? Ten. Ten. Nine. I think nine oh, has it. One for that one. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He brought his own. That's, all right. So I think nine has it. Yeah.